bless you. This is PBQ and I am your host, Apostle Desmond Thomas. Well, you see, um, God always has a way of dealing with his children. You see, God um, usually wants us to understand um, his word, not only only through a word that is given to us, but also through experience. You see, God's nature, um, he wants to express to us. He wants us to know and understand how he feels uh, in every given situation. So that's why sometimes uh, he deals with us in such a way that he gives us a practical uh, things um, in life to do and by doing them we are able to experience his nature his love and the message that is communicating to us now let me put it this way you see god wants us to have experiential knowledge and um, god wants us um, not only to teach his word but jesus put it this way he says do and teaching. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 19, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach, the same shall be greatest in the great in the kingdom of heaven so therefore god wants us to be great in his kingdom so therefore he has given us uh, certain ordinances uh, that if we go by the principles that he has given us in this ordinances and um, um, then we are able to understand God better. Let me just give an example of what I'm saying here. God spoken, spoke to Jeremiah. He told him uh, that Jeremiah shouldn't marry. Why shouldn't Jeremiah ma marry? So that Jeremiah will be able to understand how God feels uh, when Israel left him uh, so that he does not have a wife. So if Jeremiah does not have one and he's going to go with this message to Israel to tell Israel uh, that they have left God and um, he is not only preaching and um, the word of God he is experiencing uh, what he is preaching it is the same with Ozier God told Ozier said Israel have uh, um, left me and is prostituting with idols uh, and are giving birth to children that are not my children. So, Ozzy, I want you to communicate this message to Israel. And the way you're going to do it, I'm going to tell you to go and marry a prostitute. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, Apostle, what is the reason for all of this? Well, today I want to talk about the roles of the husband and the wife. And I want us to understand that God wants to teach, hallelujah, his relationship with us has is, is our husband and the church is his bride. So he has given us the institution of marriage to let the man understand what Christ is or the role of Christ to his church and he has given the woman the experience in terms of giving her a natural husband so that she will know how she should behave to the husband and by that practical experience know how the church should behave to Christ. Well, today I am talking about the roles of husband and wife in the relationship. This is Apostle Desmond Thomas and this is PBQ. See you later. Welcome back. Well, without much ado, let's begin this um, I'm teaching. Duties of the man or the husband explained. 
The first duty of the husband is that uh, the husband is being given headship over the wife. So in the relationship uh, of the man and wife, uh, we need to know that it is not equal. I mean, this whole idea about equality in the home, um, uh, the woman and man being in the same position is not of God, it's not godly. It is not according as God has planned it. Bible tells us um, that the husband is the head of the wife um, in the home. Now, let me give you a scripture. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3, it says, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, um, and the head of the woman is is the man and the head of Christ is God. So the position in the home of the wife and the husband is not in equal level. It is not that like people will say 50-50. No, the husband is the head of the wife. Scripture puts it there and it is period. And every woman need to understand that in the home, I usually put it this way, the wife is the, uh, the, the, the manager and the husband is the managing director. From the beginning, the Bible says it's the man who was first created and it was the man who was not deceived. And so as a result, the Bible says from the beginning that the husband should be the head of the wife. So we need to understand that. The Bible also says in the book of Ephesians uh, chapter 5 and verse 23, it says, uh, For the husband is the head of the wife, uh, even as Christ is the head of the church and the savior of the body. What does it mean to be the head? Uh, means that he is a first in the home. What does it mean to, mean to be the head? That means he is the final decision maker in the home. Um, I usually say to the husband, husband, um, before you make a decision, first consult your wife because she is your manager. You are the managing director. You two need to sit down together. You need to talk about things. Uh, you need to look at the pros and the cons. Uh, and the woman is, uh, um, is, should give her own thoughts and her own ideas ideas also about it and, and you should be able to put everything together into perspective uh, and then make a decision. Uh, so the final decision is yours uh, and the woman need to accept that. Um, I mean, it is not okay you make decision today, tomorrow I make decisions. Uh, that is not how God ordain it. The man makes the final decision in the home. And every godly man will not make a decision without first a consultation. No godly man will not make a decision without weighing all the pros and the cons together. Hallelujah. And I want to say this to you. I'm, I'm listen to this. Sometimes my decision is my suggestion. Sometimes my decision is my wife's suggestion. Sometimes my decision is putting part of what my wife said and part of what I said and put them together and make a decision. But uh, the woman need to accept that the final decision is the man's and, and there must be an agreement uh, and, and every man need to make the, the decision, hallelujah, for not only for his own interest, uh, but for the interest of the family, uh, taking everything into perspective. So therefore, I would like you to understand that the husband is the head in terms of him being the decision maker. I want you to also understand that the husband is the head of the house, being that he is the priest of the house. He is the priest of the house. And so therefore, the husband is your pastor. Your husband is your pastor. I don't care, woman, whether you are in the ministry, um, whatever it is, but I want you to know in the whole your husband is your pastor. Your husband is the head of the house. He is the priest of the house. And you see, the Bible also tells us, um, hallelujah, that the husband, uh, uh, he, he, you know, before even, I mean, there were pastors or were prophets, you know, during those days, uh, it was the man who make the sacrifices, uh, who call his family to prayer, who make all the sacrifices to God. Uh, so God has given him that role as the priest of the house. Uh, so man, I want you to understand that uh, you need to buck up. If your wife is the one leading prayer, you need to grow up uh, and be the one who is leading prayer in the house. Uh, if the 
I mean, you are the one who's supposed to make sure that you take your family to church. Make sure that everybody in the church is praying. Make sure that everybody in church is fasting. Make sure that everybody in your house is doing the things that are supposed to be done. You must be a responsible priest in your house. Generally, discipline is usually done by the man. So as the head of the house. But many times you can give that relate that 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 um, I mean decision. You can make it uh, and give it to your. So there are certain times a oh, wife can do some discipline. Uh, the husband also can do some discipline. Uh, I mean, he, in fact, he is the main person who disciplines the family. But I want you to understand. That's why you know when children want to take advantage over their mother, the um, I'm telling you, the father need to stand in defense. Uh, of his wife so therefore there must be a mutual understanding in terms of disciplining the children so the very first thing you need to understand about the duties of the man is that the man is the head of the wife too the man is the lover of the wife you see i mean you know society have put things in the reverse they've taken things backward it says oh it's the wife who should be the lovey lovey the loving love no 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 let me tell you something hallelujah i want you to understand that uh, um 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 <laughs> for the husband to be a lover is not a weakness uh, it's your duty for the husband to be romantic uh, it's not a um, weakness. It's your duty. Uh, you need to understand that you man, you need to be taught how to be a lover. Because let me tell you the commandment of God in the home to love is not even given to the wife. It is given to the man. So a man need to know how to be romantic. A man need to know how to be a lover. A man need to understand that the duty of love um, is is given to you whether love dies or love blooms is depend on you it is your responsibility as the man to cause love to be alive in the relationship Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 says husbands love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it I want you to understand today that the duty of love is given to the husband. You need to love your wife. The Bible says, uh, even as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. You need to love your wife to the death. Let me say this. If there is a situation where somebody has to die for the family, you know, you have to be the volunteer. You have to be the person who will die for your wife. You have to be the person who will die for your children. You have to give your life for your family. Let me tell you the love of of the husband should be a love unto death. And that's why you made a vow to God to say till death us do part. And it is a love unto death. It is a love unto death. Christ loved us so much that uh, he even gave his life for us. And, um, you know, how did Christ love us? The Bible says even when we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Um, oh, you might be saying, oh, pastor, you don't know my wife is a sinner. You don't know my wife is bad. You don't know my wife is terrible. You don't know this is a wicked woman. Well, Jesus Christ died for us, not when we were good. He died for us when we were wicked, when we were enemies, when we were alienated from God. He died for us. So therefore, you need to love your wife even, even if she is a sinner. You need to love her till the death. That is your responsibility. The Bible lets us know Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 28. So ought men to love their wives as their own body. So you don't only need to love your wife unto death. You need to love your wife as your body. I know many men like to look good. They like to wear Gucci. They like to do this. They like to make themselves good. I mean, give themselves all the nice and fancy toys. Uh, you know, I mean, men love that. Men love their body. 
Well, the Bible says the same way you love your body, that's the same way you should love your wife's body. So if you're going out there and doing some shopping for yourself, uh, getting yourself all the nice clothes and shoes, uh, don't come home without buying something similar for your wife. Uh, because the Bible says love your wife as your own body. If you care about your own toys, uh, you care about your flashy car, you care about uh, I mean your, I mean your nice television, you care about all your gadgets, uh, um, and you don't make sure that your wife has has, uh, the, the similar things that she loves uh, and making life easy for her at home, giving her a washing machine, a dishwasher, and making her comfortable in the things that she's doing in the house, uh, then you are not loving your wife as your own body. So love your wife as your own body. Now, what is love? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians that love is uh, being long-suffering and patient. Uh, many people are patient with themselves, but they're not patient with their wife. Uh, then let me tell you, love is being patient with your wife. Uh, love is being kind. Uh, and many people, they are not, care they're not, they're not kind. Many husbands are not kind. Uh, I mean, you'll be home all day. Um, so probably your wife goes to work and come home. Uh, and you cannot even help her in the kitchen. You cannot even show some kindness. Uh, some of you may even know how to cook the rice. Uh, but you will just sit down there and wait for your wife to do all the cooking. Uh, you know, you're not being kind. Love is being kind. Love is being kind. Love is, uh, I mean, when she gets I mean, to uh, home um, with the shopping and there's no one else to help her, for you to go and help her bring the shopping into the house. Love is being kind. Love. The Bible says it's not envious or but does not boil over in gel with jealousy. Love is not envious. It doesn't matter whether your wife has a, is working more money than you or has more money than you or whatever. All of that. Love is not being envious. The Bible says love is not being boastful of vain glory. Love is not being haughty tempered. Don't be haughty, the Bible says, with your wife. Love is not easily provoked. Don't allow her to provoke you. Even her tongue. Many times, you know, it says me women, they talk a lot, they do that. Don't even allow her to provoke you. Love is of God. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love oh, That's the agape love that God has given you for your wife. Three, the Bible says uh, that the husband is the savior of the house. Um, the Bible says in Ephesians 5.23, um, the husband is the head and the savior of the body. What does that mean? That means that um, um, you are the savior of the body. It means that if you have to give your life, uh, you have to give it for your wife uh, and your children. What it is saying as well, being the savior of the body. If you have some food in the house and that food cannot go around easily, you have to be the one that will sacrifice. But there are many men today, they will eat. Their wife don't have to eat and their children don't have to eat. The Bible says you are the savior of the body. You are the one who need to go without for them to have. Yes, because that's what the Bible says. You are the savior of the body. The Bible goes on to say um, that you are the breadwinner of the house. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, it says, uh, If a man, uh, if any provide not for his own house, and especially for his own, especially for his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. That's why you need to work. You don't need to sit down there and let your wife feed you. You need to go and find a job. If you can't find the job that you're looking for, Take anything else as well as long as it is bringing money in the home until you get what you want. But you need to provide for your family. The Bible says you are the savior of the body. And also the Bible says that you are the one who is supposed to be in charge of discipline in the family. So, I mean, we cannot say everything that we want to say today about the husband's role, but these are the few that we would say to we'll speak about today. Let's go quickly to the duties of the wife. The wife's first duty, the Bible says, is like the duty of the church. The, you see, if the man could lay down his life for you, if the man could sacrifice uh, being the savior of the body, if the man could be the breadwinner of the home, if the man could be the one who protect and shield you with prayer as the priest of the house, he needs one thing from you. And that's why God is that's why you know Christ. If Christ could do all of these things for us, what does Christ require of us as the church? Is to be submissive and to be obedient. 
and to be sub, to be submissive and to be obedient. That's why God has given the woman the role. The wife must submit. Her first role is to submit to her husband. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty-two to verse twenty-four, wives submit yourself to your own husband as unto the Lord. I want you to understand that your husband is Lord in your house. And there's nothing wrong with you calling your husband my Lord. Because the Bible says you must be submissive to your husband even as you are submissive to Christ. Let me tell you something, woman. If you cannot submit to your husband, I doubt it if you are submitting to the Lord Jesus. The Bible says a wife must submit themselves to their own husband as unto the Lord. So I want you to understand that your wife, your husband is Christ in the house. Your husband, you see, see the, the, the task that God has given him and his responsibility towards you, it demands your submission. Today they're looking at the word today like it's a word that I mean shouldn't be used anymore. But let me tell you, I am old school. I will tell a man you have to die for your wife. And I will tell a woman you have to submit to your husband. Because that is what God says in his word. He says, uh, um, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject to unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. You have to be submissive to your husband in everything. You listen to what it says? In everything. Not in some things, in everything. Submit to him as the decision maker. Submit to him as your priest and your pastor. Submit to him in everything, the Bible says. If he commands a fast for the home, you need to be submissive. You need to be submissive. If he makes a decision, you need to be submissive. Whether the, sub, the, the decision proves good at the end or proves bad at the end, you need to be submissive. If the decision proves good at the end, you will all benefit from it. If the decision does not prove bad at the end, you will all suffer for it. But you need to be supportive to him whether the decision succeeds or the decision does not succeed. That is how your, 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 your submission is required and demanded. The Bible also tells us in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 6, Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, and call him Lord, whose daughter are ye, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid of any amazement. The Bible says it is okay to call your husband my Lord. Oh well, yes, these days we have all the, the nice and sweet words which people don't have problem like honey, sweetie, sugar pie, and all the rest of it. Yes, but the Bible says he is also Lord in the house. And you need to honor and reference him as Lord. If he can sacrifice in times of crisis and go without that you will have, he is your Lord. Now, the second thing, the woman, um, a responsibility in our home, she is the, the homemaker of the house. Proverbs, you know, 31 gives us examples. I can't read everything on Proverbs chapter 31, but I can give you examples, you know, uh, I can put them in different groups uh, as to your responsibility as uh, the homemaker. The Bible tells us in verse 10, who can find a virtuous woman? Um, a prize is far above in rubies. Uh, the heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that she have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of his life. Life. Now listen to this. The Bible says your husband's heart should trust you. I want to ask you a question. Does your husband trust you? And you know you need to develop that trust. And the Bible says uh, um, uh, um, in this particular scripture, uh, she will do him good and not evil all the days of his life. Uh, if you Ah, that submissive woman, the Bible says, you will do him good all the days of his life. No husband would say at any time, I would not love my wife. 
in spite of what the wife does, you have to love. And no woman should in any way say to her husband, you have not loved me or you have not performed me, therefore I am not going to be submissive to you. You have to be submissive at all times, in all circumstances and in all situations. Even if he performs his role or not, you have to be. That's what scripture says. Just like I told the husband that he has to love you regardless of what you do. So you have to be submissive regardless of what he does. You know, I was watching YouTube the other day and there was this lady who was saying, you know, oh, my husband or my whatever, if she if he is not making the provision that he's supposed to do for, to provide for me. And therefore, I have all rights to go to any man, you know, who can provide for me. You are out of line. You are out of line. And I want to say again, you are out of line. You need to be submissive regardless of what. Now, as we are talking about this woman being, you know, the homemaker, um, the first thing I want you to know as a homemaker, you need to be industrious. The Bible says she seeks wool and flax and walk willingly with her hand. She is like a merchant sheep that bring her food from afar. She rises while it is yet day and give meat to her household. Um, you know, all of these things, the Bible is talking about this woman. This woman is a woman who is industrious. You know, when her husband gives her money, and uh, she doesn't just eat everything and dress with everything. She will put something aside. She is able to do her own little bit. Business. She's able to do her own little thing. She's able to, to generate money. She is also a helper in terms of generating money in the home. A virtuous woman is an industrious business woman. A woman who can use what has been given to her and multiply it and not just consume it. There are many women today who are not industrious. They will eat everything and dress with everything. And they're always looking for somebody to give. You see, a woman who is a virtuous woman is a woman who is able to generate finances herself with the limited that she has been given. She must be industrious. The Bible also says that she is generous. The Bible in verse 20, she stretches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. You need to be generous. The third thing, you see, our house, our, our husband's house will be a house that should be, if a woman is not an accommodating husband, a wife, sorry, if she cannot be generous, it makes that home difficult. She must be domesticated. These are the days uh, when women don't know how to cook, they don't know how to wash plates, they don't know how to wash dishes, they don't know how now to clean houses. A woman need to be domesticated. How can you marry without knowing how to cook? How can you marry not knowing how to clean and even make your bed when you wake up in the morning? My wife said I should be, you know, I should not be very hard. So um, I'm, I'm, I just remembered what she said. <laughs> so I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to be very hard. But the woman, the virtuous woman or a wife who is submissive should be a wife who is domesticated. The Bible also says, um, uh, the Bible, uh, in verse 21, it says, She is not afraid uh, um, of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. Uh, she makes herself coverings of slippery. Now, this woman knows how to sew things. Uh, this woman knows how to cook. Uh, this woman knows how to make her home. She is domesticated. Let me tell you, the days of, uh, I mean, a woman being domesticated is not over. It is now. It is now. It is now. You see, this woman was not lazy. You know, there are some women who sit down watching Bollywood and Nollywood all day and the time to cook, the time the husband is coming home and to eat, that's the time. Oh, oh, I've not cooked. I've not done anything. Laziness is not allowed in submission. She is kind. The Bible says in verse 23, she opened her mouth with wisdom and her tongue um, is the law of kindness. 27, the Bible says she is not idle. Um, she looketh um, well to the ways of her house and eateth not the bread of idleness. The Bible says she is God-fearing. 29, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excedeth them all. Favor is deceitful. And beauty is vain. But the woman that feareth the Lord, 
she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gate. So we see um, concerning this woman that this woman is, hallelujah, she fears the Lord. Now let me give you this and then um, we will come to the end of this teaching today. The woman generally raised the children. The man helped. You see, but let me tell you, that's why a woman needs to take very good care of her children because, uh, you know, when, I mean, scripture says when the child grows up and uh, things are better with this child, the father receives the praise. But when the child goes worse, it's the blame of the mother. So therefore, you need to, you need to take special interest uh, in that child, hallelujah, because um, if the child does not come up when the way it is supposed to, it's the blame of the mother. The Bible says uh, in Proverbs 29, 15, the rod and reproof grieveth wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Mother, bring your laws in the home. Take care of your children and you shall be praised. Well, this is um, the few things I want to say about the role of the husband and the role of the wife in the home. I hope you are blessed today. This is Apostle Desmond Thomason, and this is Prophetic and Biblical Question, PBQ. See you later, and God richly bless you.